Hi, my name is Joe Small. My friends and I produced this documentary film following our 2015 field excursion in central Montana. And our purpose is to share with you our exciting and sometimes surprising discoveries. We began this quest with a set of very carefully crafted assumptions. And then, every day and in every way, our assumptions were field tested and often defeated. That is to say, we were frequently wrong. So we present this documentary to you in the sequence that the events actually occurred so that you can see where we went wrong and how we adjusted. We'll come back here from time to time during the course of this presentation to help keep our story on track. Thanks for watching. In the area north of Winifred, Montana, the Missouri River has carved its way into sediments from the age of dinosaurs. Our primary objective is to understand the regional geology. We will make extensive use of Google Earth software and combine it with these stylized graphics to help inform you of our progress. Lately, our interest has shifted toward the bright sandstones of the Eagle Formation. The Eagle Formation has a reputation for very few fossils, but we've always had good luck. We are visiting a few more Eagle places on our way to this year's study area. We have prepared ourselves to distinguish Eagle Formation from Judith River Formation outcrops, especially difficult in areas where the layers are no longer nice and horizontal. For the record, typical biota of the Eagle Formation includes a variety of trace fossils, including the burrows of small animals, some of which have very distinguishing cross-sections. The top layers, reflecting rising sea levels, include the bones and teeth of marine animals and shells of nearshore bivalves. One more important marker for the eagle formation. Not fossils, but these wave-washed chert pebbles. They are found everywhere within the uppermost layers. The Eagle Sandstone is 81 million years old, and the shoreline environment that it has preserved is considerably different than the huge river basin captured in the muddy sediments of the Judith River Formation. Of course, they appear similar from a distance. Close examination is required for positive identification. Many miles from our traditional research area, this three-mile-long ridge is this season's principal research target. The backbone of this long ridge is almost certainly composed of the hardest portion of the various sedimentary rocks. Is this ridge eagle sandstone? What sediments make up the western flank? Are the marine shales exposed along the eastern side younger or older? We intend to find out. We planned this excursion quite carefully, including many hours with Google Earth software and geology maps. Here's our ridgeline. We'll hike along this one mile pre-planned path so we get our cameras and GPS recorders, put on our packs and head out. Well, <laughs> maybe not. The terrain is seriously more vertical than the rounded, smooshy, gentle curves suggested by Google Earth. Nice scenery, but we are not really equipped for climbing on these surfaces. We have to rethink our survey strategy, but we did find some very interesting fossils in the upper areas.
The rocks along the ridge line include these disturbing faces. We had a lovely day at our first research section, but our plans to do a detailed cross-section analysis were defeated by the extreme terrain. We were, however, able to get a close look at some of the rocks and saw some very nice fossils. No evidence of Eagle Sandstone. In the area highlighted, there were strong indications of Judith River Formation sediments. Let's move along to our next research section, one that we visited a couple days later. We had been to this area in earlier years, but didn't look closely. So let's get started. Yes, we have been here before, but the section we wish to explore is a serious hike from here. The southernmost part of the ridge is about two miles away. We are going to hike down this hill and across this stream channel. Then begin the systematic part of our survey up the slope, across here, then along the ridge line. Switching to Google Earth View, the green line is our GPS recording. As we begin our section survey, we find fossils right away. These thick and strong snails are especially interesting to team member Gary Burgess, marine invertebrate specialist. Continuing up the slope, Lou Vance finds a large assortment of fossil bones. Some we recognize as vertebrae, but we have no immediate idea of the animal's identity. Nothing familiar within our experience, but very interesting, so we took a great number of photographs for future referral. The interesting features of this vertebra include a pair of openings. They are full of mud, but still we can see that they pass all the way to the other side. Here are some other scenes from our discovery. We continue our hike toward the summit. In the upper region we spotted fossilized wood and occasional weathered bone fragments, this one viewed in cross-section. And surprisingly, another of the remarkable gastropods found much lower on the slope. A layer of broken oyster shells, though not attractive, provide a welcome orientation point. We know these oysters mark the transition from Judith River to Bear Paw Shale formations. We will have more to say about oysters and stratigraphy in a few minutes. The hard sandstone along the ridge includes trace fossils, those of shallow water burrowing animals. A cross-section view reveals concentric rings of varying composition. Recall our GPS track. It is about six-tenths of a mile long. For illustration, we now replace our GPS track with a simplified line, which will later become our cross-section. We've hiked and climbed along the route we planned, observing fossils along the way. In a moment, we will map some of our fossils in relation to this section line and share some preliminary analysis. We have been recording the GPS coordinates of each fossil sighting. Here we plot them along our survey line. Of course, this fossil wood originated in a land environment. Thick-shelled relatives of moon snails 
are known for marine and possibly estuarian environments. Oysters of this species are limited to the transitional estuaries between the Judith River and Bear Paw formations. This nice vertebra is probably that of a large marine animal such as a plesiosaur. Less glamorous, but also useful to our investigation, are these trace fossils. Elsewhere in the region, the various layers remain horizontal, undisturbed. We are familiar with their typical appearance. Here in a fresh stream cut, and here where long-term weathering has formed typical badlands. In our study area, the disturbed strata take on a quite unfamiliar appearance. Let's look at the various rock layers more closely. The aerial and ellipse show the camera position and subject area. The layers are tilted. The amount of tilt, the dip, is progressively greater from left to right. We can see where the light sandstone at the top of the ridge extends far to the north. Looking south, the disturbance is even more dramatic. The rocks at the top of the ridge are vertical, or nearly so. The amount of tilt is progressively less to the right. These hard and buff-colored sandstones are very much like the lowest layers of the Judith River formation. Looking back down the slope, various other layers are seen in section. Especially as we transition from the Google Earth view to actual video. and we can see Gary Burgess looking carefully for more fossil clues. We've now completed our observations along our second survey line, our preliminary findings. In tan we see Judith River sediments, both displaced and tilted. The light green color shows Judith River formation deposits undisturbed, and light blue a section that we have not yet been able to identify. We'll postpone further mapping until we have had a chance to look at our third plan section. We are trying to come up with some ideas on how the disturbance at Old Cow Creek may have occurred, and are beginning to believe it is related to the formation of nearby mountains. We've thoroughly surveyed our second section and learned a great deal. This is great fun and we want more data. Now we'll go to our third plan section where its proximity to a very detailed formally mapped section will give us the opportunity to compare conditions under our feet with the map and with the Google Earth view. Several days ago we were able to get these photos of our third area from our first intended section. Today we are looking forward to direct examination. 
Smoke from distant forest fires is everywhere as we make our long drive. We take this time to review our plans and preparations. Here, just north of today's destination, we trim the map area along a formally surveyed section line, then tip it back to reveal the details. This kind of section view is very informative and of course useful to our research. We are getting closer to our Section 3 survey, but it is still a few miles away. Although we are tempted to stop and look for fossils, we drive right past these undisturbed outcrops. Homesteads in this remote valley were abandoned a long time ago, and our road is becoming a bit more difficult. While we consider our options, spectators began to gather. This extended family of rock wrens want to know what's going on. Even the scruffy teenager comes to look. Well, we had a nice drive, but didn't reach our destination. We've run out of time for this year's adventure. Now we'll briefly summarize and present our findings. Our first field day was somewhat productive, but the terrain was too rugged for our intended section survey. During our second field day, we completed a very detailed section analysis, but we didn't make it to the third of our intended study sections. Nevertheless, we are pleased with what we have seen and now present our diagnosis along with some of the supporting analysis. Here we extend the detailed surface geology from the formally mapped area immediately north of our study area. And this, in turn, compares favorably with our preliminary analysis at Section 2. Oh yeah, whatever happened to the Eagle Sandstone we are so fond of? We didn't get close to it, but here it is at the bottom of the eastern slope. This is all good, but we need to add a little more detail. Here's what we mean. In the elevated section view, each of the major geologic units are represented by a single color. We add some symbolic layers to reflect the complexity of the Judith River Formation. You'll remember our GPS track and how it was converted into a simplified cross-section line. We'd like to show you what is under the surface, but need some help. Now don't be alarmed, but we ask our friends from Planet Mongo to use their nitron lamp weapon for peaceful purposes. How might this have happened? Here is just one possibility. Molten rock associated with nearby Bearpaw 
and Zortman Mountain Building, cracks and displaces the bedrock. Upwelling stops, then partially drains, leaving a fractured landscape. Here's a closer view of the process superimposed on our cross-section. As tilting passes a critical point, layers within the Judith River formation slide and slump. Finally, gentle surface erosion over a very long time creates the smooth contours of today. Our model explains the unusual appearance of the Judith River formation and predicts the position of the Eagle Sandstone right about here. Our several days of field investigation have yielded, at least for our purposes, a satisfactory understanding of the disturbance at Cow Creek. And like all good research projects, we now have a few answers and a large number of new questions that we can address during future field seasons. With the exception of our little nitron lamp illustration, we have shown you actual events and shared with you the order in which they actually occur. We are pleased with the results of having added some structure to this season's adventure, although we certainly allowed enough time for aimlessly wandering about a combination we intend to continue in the future field adventures. In 2016, we will resume exploration and research with a renewed attempt to complete our third planned section survey, a visit to a feature known locally as Steamboat Rock, and trips to a couple interesting areas not in the immediate vicinity. Thanks for watching.